let's do this. I want to attack this question. I, uh, I haven't been making videos as much lately because I've been trying to study my ass off to take the April exam FM. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm way past this section, but um, this question looked interesting. So I thought I would attack it. Uh, as usual, SOA explains nothing. So hopefully at least in the beginning you'll see uh, what they have, see where it comes from, right? All right, so anyways, anyways, this is what we have. And um, just these are just some of the details given. Uh, we're told that the effective interest rate is 9.2% um, annually. So that's important. Uh, it is annually, right? My payments are made annually. Bottom line here doesn't even matter is that the interest rate coincides with when I make the payments. So I have a period of my payment and the interest rate is computed throughout uh, once to that compounded once to that period. So <clears throat> anyways, we're told that the present value of this perpetuity, meaning an annuity with non-level, uh, sorry, well, they told me it was non-level payments, but perpetu per perpetuity is an annuity with payments that increase, that go on forever. So just some terminology there. Uh, anyways, the present value of this is 167.5. So what they tell me here is that the first five years, okay, payments are at the end of the year, which means it's a perpetuity immediate. So my payments are at the end of the year, starting from time zero. <coughs> first five years are 10. And then uh, each year, starting with year six, they increase by K percent. So I have question marks right here because I want you to hopefully think about what should go here. Um, let's, just, let's just reason through this. Let's reason through this. So year, year six, what's going on in year six? What should I put for year six? Well, they increase by K percent. First of all, actually, what does percent mean? Percent, percent means out of 100. So this is K times one over 100, AKA 0, 0.0 K. So I'm gonna think of it like this, right? They say K percent. A lot of times, I think oftentimes people don't even know what percent means. It means out of 100. So anyways, anyways, what's the payment gonna be in year six? It's K percent more than that of the preceding year. So in other words, it's 10, okay? T a K percent more. Okay, well then the payment must be 10 plus K percent of 10, plus 0, 0.0 K times 10. All right, lo and behold, this is 1.0 K times 10. So hopefully, I mean, I'm just, just factor 10 out, right? And we get that. Uh, what is the payment in year seven? And after we get year seven, uh, hopefully you'll just see the pattern. Why do you think, I need to add, I need to increase the previous year by K percent. The payment in the previous year is 1.0K times 10. I need to increase that by K percent. So plus 0.0K times, so increase this, right, the previous year by K percent. So this times the previous year. So this is 1.0K times 10. Factor out the greatest common factor again, which is this expression, right? They have those in common. I'm just trying to be explicit, as explicit as possible, right? These two are in common, factor that out. So this is 1.0K times 10. But then over here, if I factor that out, look, I have a one plus, let me just write it out, I have 1.0K again. So this is 1.0K squared times 10. How nice, hopefully you see the pattern now let me write down these payments right here. These payments that I have right here, it looks like I have for year six, I have 1.0K times 10. And for year seven, I'm going to have this business, right? This business, 1.0K squared times 10. 
This is what's called, by the way, once I get past year five, what we actually say here now is that the payments are uh, given as a geometric progression. Why the hell would we give that? Why would we say that? Just think back a geometric series. What, a ge what is a geometric series? Well, basically by definition, it means that every term is a multiple of the previous term, and it's always the same multiple. Well, this is a multiple of this term, namely, the common ratio is 1.0k. Times 1.0k, times 1.0k, etc. These are my payments. So the payments are, they form an, an, a geometric progression. So, no big deal, no big deal. If you thought this was overkill, fine. That's fine, whatever. I just wanted to explain it anyway in case you didn't have any idea where it came from. So bottom line is we want to find what k is, and I pretty much have everything I need. I'm also going to address why would they bring this up? Why would they even write that down? Are they just trying to mess with our minds? All right, so ultimately, I want to know what is k, right? I want to find k, and we're told k is less than 9.2. So 9.2, that's the interest rate. So does that play a role whatsoever. Well, let me write down uh, an equation. Pretty much almost everything on this exam comes down to, can you write down the correct equation? From my experience so far, if you write down the correct equation, the rest is just very easy algebra. All right, so this is what we have. One point, I just wrote, erased it and forgot to look at it. 167.5 uh, is the present value. So 167.5, <coughs> this is my present value. I need to find the present value of all these annuities, or sorry, all these payments, which forms an annuity, right? Let's first deal with up to year five, up to year five, okay? And let me just make sure I write down the notation. Hopefully you're familiar with this. V is always equal to this notation. It is always equal to one plus the interest rate. The interest rate is 0.092, right, as a decimal, one plus that is 1.092 to the negative one. This is always uh, what V represents, AKA the discount factor. This is what allows you to do present value. So I'm gonna bring this back by one factor, bring this back by two factors, I have two periods, bring this back by three factors, etc. I'm not gonna write all this out, and look at my previous video, I've done this before. What I'm saying, bottom line here, is if I just want if I just want the present value of these first five payments, it's just the payment times it's an annuity immediate, and I have five of them at interest rate 9.2. So easy peasy so far. Easy peasy, right? I mean, this, this is calculator work, and I'll show you to do it on the calculator. It's quite easy. I don't mean to add this to, though. This one I'll actually write out, since this is kind of the, maybe the newer portion. Okay, payments that form a geometric progression. So what is going on here? So what I'm gonna do actually, and by the way, I'm evaluating everything right here at time zero. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to first compute a perpetuity immediate. So this is sort of my, my, my break is right here. I'm dealing with all this business to the right. I'm gonna bring all these back to time five. Once I get them to time five, then I'll discount them back to time zero. And that's gonna give me what I want. So let me just do a perpetuity immediate right here, and then I'll discount it, I'll discount that back to time zero. Here's the discount factor back to time zero. If I want to discount that back to time zero, I need V to the fifth. That will take whatever's here all the way back to time zero, which is what I want. Now let's write down the present value of all of these payments. And keep in mind, there's an infinite number. That's important. All right. So, oh, by the way, also, let me do this as well to save myself some room. There's gonna be a 10 in each one of these. So I'll factor out a 10 as well. So I have a 10, all right? Now what's left over? I have to bring 1.0K back to your five. Okay, 1.0K back to year five, that takes it to year five, plus 1.0k squared, I need to take this back to year five. So 
Let me discount it by two plus dot, 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 dot. This goes on forever, forever. Now just go back to just whatever algebra or maybe even calculus where you learn this. This is a geometric sum, a geometric series. How do I know that? Because to get to the next term, I multiply by the same thing. Now it's different than the payments. The payments formed a geometric uh, progression, but this actually itself is a geometric series. What is the common ratio? So this is a geometric series. with common ratio what? It's just whatever I multiply the previous term to get to the next one. In other words, you could take this term divided by the previous. It is 1.0 kV. That's my common ratio. That's my common ratio. How nice. Now hopefully you're saying, <coughs> oh, I know why they gave me this. Or this? Why did they, they give me this? Think about it for a second. When does a geometric uh, series infinite converge? It only converges if the if the absolute value of the common ratio is between negative one and one. If k exceeds nine or point zero nine two, this is common ratio is greater than one. Because keep in mind what v is. V is this. So let me think, let me, let me have you think about that for a while. But basically, I claim that this actually, this right here, is less than one. It's less than one, and we need this, we need this, so because, so, thus, converges. If it doesn't converge, I mean, there better be an option <laughs> for... <laughs> This would never happen, but for the exam, something like diverges. I mean, whatever. It's not going to happen. They're always going to have this thing converge, right? <coughs> Anyways, that's why they have this. That's why they have that. It's not because this comes up as a possible solution. Something greater than 9.2, which is my first thought. Anyways, anyways, let's compute this one. We'll be there. So let me give myself some more room. We're pretty much there. I mean, it's just algebra now. It's easy peasy at this point, right? As I mentioned, the, the, the crucial part here with these questions I noticed for this exam is just setting up an equation. This can be the trickiest part, what I just did. But now, let me write down, uh, let's just continue, let's just figure this out. So, uh, what I have now is the following. I have 167.5 is equal to 10 uh, annuity immediate five payments at 9.2% plus 10 V to the fifth. I know how to write, I know how to find the infinite sum of a geometric series. It's only the first term. Infinite is nice because I don't have to worry about counting anything. So this is 1.0 K, the first term, divided by one minus the common ratio. If the series converges, and it's infinite and it's geometric and the common ratio between negative one and one converges to this. So that's what we got. All right, let's do this on the calculator real quick. Let me just explain how to do this on the calculator. This guy right here, for your BA2, BA2 plus, which is what I've been using for these annuity business, is uh, what you wanna do is you wanna do the following keystrokes. You wanna do 10 and then plus minus. Uh, and then payment, that's my payment. All right, these are the payments for the first five years. Then I wanna do five and then N. <coughs> and then I wanna do 9.2, literally just like that. Write it as a percentage. Um, and then I over Y. Okay, that's my interest rate uh, per year. But really it's just per period. Unless you change the periods per year. Anyways, this should give you, uh, this should give you Oh, and then um, after this, actually, we need to compute something, right? We need to compute the present value. So then CPT, PV. Because that's what we want here. We want the present value of this little piece. The present value of this little piece is 
this is equal to 38.6955. So that takes care of uh, this, just this piece, just that piece. So let me uh, write that down. So let me write that down right here. So this quantity, this quantity right here is 38.6955. So now we just, we just do some algebra, right? I mean, this is, this is nothing. It's pretty much nothing, right? I mean, easy peasy at this point. Compared to everything else you've been doing, I mean, <laughs> compared to the computations you want exam P, nothing. Absolutely nothing right here. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this, divide by this, and I get something nice there actually. Uh, what I get is 20. <laughs> what I get is 20 is equal to uh, 1.0 kV divided by 1 minus 1.0 kV. You better not have trouble solving an equation like this. This is algebra 2, intermediate algebra. We need to get k by itself, multiply both sides by the denominator, bring every term with k to one side, divide by the rest. So I hope you know how to do this. I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to insult your intelligence to go through that. But what you should get here is solving this is you should get um, this. You should get 20 equals 21 times 1.0 kV, which tells you actually that k is, well, it's about 4%. So that's my answer. <coughs> of course, I converted to a percentage. That's what I get. Hope this was helpful. Um, tell me what you think about it. And um, I'll really try to make more videos more frequently. Again, I'm trying to take the April FM exam. So that's the plan. All right. Thank you for subscribing and uh, tell me what you think.